I think arthritis of the spine is far more common than than likely get recognized in traditional veterinary medicine. So, I mean, in in traditional veterinary medicine, we would recognize that you can have a degeneration of the disc, right? So mm -hmm. that can get narrow. But yeah. then what you have, I've got to find my good guy here. Well, there's one that's colored. Oh, there we are. But then what can happen here is these joints in between, mm -hmm. right? So they go in like this. And those joints, so there's like two on between each, each vertebrae. And those are the arthritis too. So you can have back pain that isn't from a disc, but from the joints. And yeah. so if I get a little bit technical and nerdy here. So normally, if this is all lined up the way it could be, it's it has a little bit of a roundedness. And so those, those um, they're called facet joints, right? So the mm -hmm. facet joints just basically sit side by side, especially in the, in the lumbar side spine what can happen is if uh let's say it can be um too much weight which i had read on one of the, one of the what was it your oh what do you call those where they're made and they've got pictures and they have oh, a word for them infographic infographic i saw yes. on one of your infographics where it was talking about you know, the majority of arthritic dogs are overweight right so yeah. this can be a component of that as well that that oh where's my blue guy you can kind of see him poking out here okay so then what can happen is this starts to go into more extension right mm -hmm. and then with that you start to get a bashing of those facet joints so they and that, start why you get the extension because you get the weight of the belly so the back starts you get the weight of the belly and or it's just lack of fitness Yes. Right. So cool. lack of so it doesn't have to necessarily be overweight. It can be lack of fitness, mm -hmm. um, and all of that that pushes downwards. Okay. Um, and there are some thought process too. Well, okay, this is my thoughts. Um, that that also, if you have the very energetic dogs in their youth and they're like, if they crash and bash and they're like whipping around and whatnot, yeah. they can still be damaged. To the to the facet joints in through there, and then it becomes the kind of I guess circular thing where the joints don't move properly, they become degenerated in through there, which affects the disc, and then the disc becomes degenerated. When the disc starts to degenerate, it allows for more mobility, more motion in through there, or rather less stability. So then you further damage the facet joints on top mm -hmm. and you kind of have this cycle. Viral, yeah. Yeah. And I think um, we've had a question here already. Is that known as spondylosis, which is what everybody latches onto? It's different. Explain the difference. Well, actually, yay, because then I can get on my next tangent, which is so, so... Okay, let's look at this guy who's, can you see the orange? Oh, hang on, mm, there. So you can see the blue, can you kind of? Oh, there That's the you can see the blue a little bit, right? Yeah. That's where the facet joint should be. Yeah. The orange part ends up being underneath it. Yeah. So if we have the bathroom of the facet joints, yeah. then the body starts creating what's called facet joint extensions. So so in the lumbar spine, the facets would sit like this and they mm -hmm. would sit beside each other here. With all that additional extension, we start to create a facet joint underneath, right? right, and behind. So now we almost end up with a ball and socket joint. Ooh. So here's my theory, my theory, but I'm, I like it, so it must be right. <laughs> okay, so if we have that, then nothing is now stabilizing. You don't have the bony mechanisms to stabilize the spine anymore, yeah. right? So I believe that these facet joint extensions are a precursor to spondylosis. 